Hello and a very warm welcome to the Insider Essay, your guide to living better. Join us today as we open up to humble beginnings with Rich Nisi taking his roots in Tonga design to the world. Authentic music always rings true for Afro soul jazz artist Mandisi Jainjis. Entrepreneur Annette Scarp's boutique hotel succeeds by keeping it 100% Kayalicha. Spinach queen Umtumisa Mkapile shifts from cooking food to growing it, creating jobs every step of the way. For rap artist Reason, the move from hip hop to Amapiano nets a major record deal. And offering an array of homegrown plant based deliciousness, vegan baker Bonolo finds a hungry market. Even at its humblest, undiscovered beginnings, the talent of young designer Rich Mnisi drew on the wealth of his culture for inspiration. Today, that heritage is the theme of a proud collaboration with Adidas, the first for South Africa and the very latest for the brand. It was in the beginning of like the pandemic and I received this email from Adidas saying, um, you know, they've worked with Beyonce and Pharrell and now they'd want to work with us and it was such a surreal experience and it's been like such a beautiful journey because they're just such great people to work with. The look and the colors and all the trash basically come from what we always do as well as a brand and mostly inspired by the Tsonga tribe and like how we relate to color and pattern and like how all those colors can like almost like fight against each other in clash, but like there's so much harmony and I just think it speaks to humanity as well. Like there's so much clashes between us, but there's harmony as well because we all need each other. And that was like the core inspiration behind like how everything came together with the collection. It features performance wear for sports, reimagined footwear and streetwear. The brand and Kate Woods in particular could not be prouder. I think Rich really epitomizes the Adidas brand belief that impossible is nothing. And his passion, his dedication and perseverance to really go after his dreams is hugely inspirational. For Adidas, you know, we get to really celebrate what we're about. We're about sport and we're about style. And Rich has really brought his African flavor and energy and passion and this really truly South African heritage and culture to some of our most iconic pieces. We pride ourselves on being the platform for incredible voices such as Rich and Nisi. And that's what we really want to do. We want to amplify their creativity. We want to be the platform for them to reach a wider audience and really tell the stories. And I think when working with a creative like Rich, that's what's really special because of the intrinsic history and heritage that he is trying to express through his work. A lot of South Africans are doing so much to be seen and noticed, whether it be with our fashion or entertainment industry. And I think this will really show us that everything really is possible. You know, if you put your mind to it, if you work hard, um, you know, up and coming designers now look at Rich and think, you know, it's possible for me too, um, so that they know that they can start and really put their all into it. And yeah, I think it's going to do amazing things for us. My outfit today, it's Rich and Nisi, so I had to bring in the color. I tried to incorporate as much um, as I could of myself. Love color, I love fashion. And so I immediately thought, let me get these cow boots on, which really match with, you know, Rich's aesthetic of print and just beautiful South African colors. And so that's what inspired my look today. Style influencer Maps Maponyane grew up watching his dad play in this famed sporting brand. And he is as big a fan of Rich's fashion. It's a local young designer collaborating with one of the world's biggest brands imaginable. The magnitude of that is unfathomable and the collaboration could not be a more beautiful marriage. It's just so African but also so rich and so celebratory of our culture. And I think it's going to absolutely send waves all across the world. I don't think they could have uh, made a better choice and I, I can't wait to see what's next. 
absolutely obsessed with the new Rich Amnesia Adidas collection. Like when I got my PR drop off, I was just screaming away. One, I love brands that are inclusive. The fact that a chubby girl like me is able to look so hot in all of this made me so, so happy. I'm all for inclusivity. And also I like how anyone who sees me will definitely know that she's wearing a Rich Amnesia outfit and I love that. And just seeing him collaborate with such a big international brand, more than anything outside of the amazing, beautiful clothes, I think it's just the epitome of inspiration. So my outfit is actually styled by Amy Zama. She's a stylist that Rich uses on a lot of his photo shoots. Um, so it's a lot of color. I don't usually do that much color, but I think it's amazing. I feel really confident and I feel really beautiful in all the color. <laughs> Rich is one of my closest friends, so witnessing him, you know, go through all of the different emotions and the creativity that went behind it, it's definitely a lot of hard work and seeing it come together is one of the most incredible experiences ever. And it's going to be beautiful seeing people from all over the world representing South Africa. I'm super excited. My favorite piece would definitely be the um, Ultra Boost sneakers. They are, I always struggle when it comes to shoes. When I wore them, super comfortable. I love the functionality. Adidas has stayed true to whether it's working out, whether it's your day-to-day -day life, but still being fashionable and in a very unique way. I wore them and everyone's been complimenting me and asking me like where I got them from, so I can't wait for them to hit stores. I really like how colorful and bold all the pieces are. Rich is so creative. I'm such a huge fan of his work. And I'm really proud of what he's doing. It's, it's incredible. It's literally a dream come true. I can only imagine how Rich feels being in this moment, just watching his collection and everyone here to celebrate him. It's, it's incredible. It looks really beautiful. My favorite piece is definitely the bomber. I'm a bomber type of jacket girl. You can dress it up, you can dress it down. And also slides, I saw these slides. Everybody that knows me knows I love a comfortable pair of shoes. And I love the fact that they're rich and easy added as slides, wild. My goodness, this new collection is absolutely, absolutely beautiful. And I love how it incorporates his homeland, his Songa um, tradition, culture into it. I think taking a global brand like Adidas with a global brand like Rich Amnesi and still bringing it back home is the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. Hearing Rich speak about his collection and him thank everyone, um, you get why people buy into the Rich Amnesi brand. You don't just buy into the clothes, you buy into his vision, you buy into the person because it is made with so much love, so much vision and so much respect for the people around him and so much kindness. So this event was just a celebration of Rich's work, but also a celebration of a global collaboration that is absolutely amazing. This is bigger than just Rich and Adidas. This is actually paving the way for the South African fashion industry. Rich is an inspiration. He's showing that it is possible for future South African designers to come and make it on a global scale. Whether it be in sport or in culture, South African talents are being recognized around the globe. And it's about creating hope that the future can be different to the past and that there is this real rise of African influence around the globe. And I really can't wait to see consumers from around the world rocking their Rich Manisi Adidas collection, just celebrating South African heritage and culture. Coming up, the more that Township raised a net scarp saw of the world in all its luxury, the more convinced she was that Kaya could match it. to an entrepreneur whose triumph is as much for her community as herself. Born in Kualanga and raised in Kayalicha, her view of humble beginnings is to embrace, build on and transform them. Hi, my name is Annette Skap. I'm the CEO and owner of the Spade Boutique Hotel and Spa and welcome. I was in the aviation industry for 10 years and I've traveled to many destinations around the world and therefore I've been exposed to opulence and luxury and that has ignited the vision to bring that into Kailicha and open my own hotel. In the same month, Annette also brought home her new baby boy. It's a full vote of confidence in her Kasi. 
Kailicha is home for me and my vision has always been to put Kailicha on the map to bring the world to Kailicha and also for local and international tourists to come and experience the positive side of the township to share spaces with ordinary people. In launching the first four-star hotel and spa in a township, Annette is following a fine example. My greatest inspiration was my mother. She first worked as a tea lady, and then after that, she decided to be a seamstress. She opened her own business, making curtains for people. Uh, while doing that, she also opened a fishery, selling fish and chips in our community. So I got that entrepreneurial spirit from my mother. Academic and practical, the CEO is now doing a BCom in accounting science at UNISA. After high school, I studied internal auditing at CPUT. I got my diploma and then um, my mother wanted me to continue with my studies. But then I saw an opportunity at um, the aviation industry and I wanted to help out at home. We are a family of six, so I thought if I work there, things will be better at home. I started very young as a flight attendant, so it was exciting. I mean, the money was exciting for a young girl like me, but as time went by, uh, it wasn't a challenge for me. So I wanted something that's gonna challenge me, and that's why I decided to become an entrepreneur. When Annette lost her mom, she had to grow up fast, focus, and begin to lay down the foundations for what she wanted to achieve. My business venture started seven years ago with rental properties in Kailicha. I saw um, a gap in the market with an influx of people coming into the Western Cape, coming into Kailicha, and I thought, why not uh, seize the opportunity by developing a string of rental flats for a safe and secure accommodation. I also saw that Kailicha has become a hub of lifestyle entertainment with entertainment spots opening up. Managed to pull people from outside to come and experience the lifestyle. So I thought, why not open a hotel so that people that come to Kailicha can stay over? Now that the real estate and hospitality entrepreneur is a mother of three herself, she is building a family legacy. So the name came from our other businesses. My husband's name is Ace, so he named his businesses Gua Ace, and they use the Ace of Spades symbol. So when I opened the hotel, I thought, why not um, preserve the brand and also use the symbol, the spade. As well as employing 17 staff from the community, much of the building and interior design of the hotel is a source of local pride. The purpose of this establishment was very intentional. We not only see this as accommodation, but as an economic development activity, we have used small black-owned businesses for construction, interior design, and some of our amenities were outsourced from a black woman, like your diffusers and your candles. Even the carpentry in the room then around the hotel was done by someone from the township. Among those empowered by this approach is Aubrey Dolweni, whose first class journey speaks for itself. My love for carpentry started when I was still young. I was still at primary. When my father used to do kitchens. He was the go-to guy in our township at the time. So normally I started fiddling around with the tools on weekends, helping my father out. People used to see the stuff that I do, and then they asked me to do stuff for them. It was like, at the time it was a hobby. Then a friend of mine, my best friend, approached me and was like, wow, bro, you've got to do my kitchen, you've got to do my TV stand, I did that. After that, he came out with the idea that, hey, Ops, you can start a living with this, and then we started the business. The opportunity to outfit a luxury hotel is one thing. Better still, when it puts your own community on a four-star map. We decided to go modern with the latest trend. The high gloss boards like your storm grey high gloss. Stuff that you don't see in a usual house. The color combination also, all the rooms in the hotel are not exactly the same color. It differs, but it's not one color. I wanted people, when people come and they like feel like, wow, I never thought I could do something like this, but I'm gonna try to do it at home. 
Investing in art should also start at home, as it has in the paintings of Olwetu Patuleni, whose promise was obvious to anyone who saw even his earliest work. I started drawing at a young age, before I even went to primary school. I was motivated by my teachers. They used to comment on the drawings that I used to do at that time, and that inspired me a lot. I received a call from the manager. He told me that I must come on the next day and bring all my artwork to him. He saw my work on social media. The first time I received the call, I, I, I couldn't believe, and I was so surprised. My mood was down, but after that call, like, it uplifted my mood and I was so happy to the point that I couldn't wait uh, for the next day. The confident female African character in many of his portraits is fitting in spaces created by just such a woman. I did all the artwork in this hotel. My style of art is modern and contemporary art that are welcoming in this space. When people see my paintings, I want them to feel happy and relaxed. As you can see, that woman on that painting, she is happy and relaxed. And that feeling communicates with the people that come in here into the space. As creative and luxurious as they are, every one of the 13 suites feels authentic to where it is. My hopes and dreams is for this hotel. Firstly, to put Kailicha on the map. I want to change the narrative that nothing good can come out of the township and that people from the township do not deserve luxury. I also want to inspire not only black women, but black people that you can achieve anything in life if you put your mind to it. Here stands the proof. Annette and her husband have given the township economy a vision of something bigger and a foundation for others to build on. Coming up, the only thing to come near hearing the voice and trumpet of jazz musician Mandisi Janchis is the story of how he came to be heard. Molweni um, the insider SA. Hi, Kamalam Gumandisi. Welcome to my working space here in Cape Town. I grew up in Port Elizabeth, which is now called Abeja. I grew up in a family house. At some point in my house, there were 16 people living in my house. But the joy of that was that in a house like that, music and singing is natural. They were older than me, so they'd started singing in the church choirs and they were playing in church bands and then they'd come back with hymn books and with music, choral music, and they would be practicing in the house. And so my ear gravitated towards those things and I would just be mimicking and singing until people noticed that I got these things easy. I'd, I'd hear a song and I would sing it tomorrow. <laughs> In my primary school, Pentla Primary School, I was very much involved in the choir. And so we were singing once, and I was singing a solo or something. Then and I got spotted and I got, I got given a scholarship. And I went to the then Model C schools, which was Pearson High. Everything changed. Access, you know, I walked into a music room which had a piano and which had not one piano, two pianos, and I could choose and I could sit on a piano all day. I could rent the trumpet from the school. I had a music teacher, I had a singing teacher. And I think that just confirmed what I was going to be. And from then on, it was probably the first day in grade eight, I knew that this is what I wanted to do. And then after matric, then I got a bursary and I came to UCT. <laughs> From university on, he grew into a composer, singer and producer of jazz, classical and African indigenous music. 
but not before accepting some of music's hard truths. You come into a music institution and you realize, number one, you're not <laughs> as good as you thought you were. There's something that you are going to need to do to become better, you know, and to succeed in what you've chosen. And for me, it was discipline, consistency, diligence. Talent is part of it, but if you're not as diligent and consistent in the work that you do, you will not succeed. And it's still the ethos that I live today. His vocal technique and everything is just incredible. And also just, it's powerful. I think that's one of the main draws and, and catches to his voice. And then in terms of writing, he's a trumpeter and a vocalist. So he writes like amazing melodies, but even with chords and rhythms, he knows it all. I don't have a process of writing music, but I think as a musician, um, the most important thing that you can have is to be empathetic to everything that is happening around you. So politics, social economics, personal things affect you. And, and because they do that, you are bound to want to express that. And my way of expressing it is through music. I always say that the trumpet is my closest friend, my most honest friend, because it stays constant. You know exactly what you're going to get every day. The best times for me with the instrument is when it feels a part of me. You know, when it's just like, it feels like it's, it's another limb. But sometimes it feels like an instrument, that something that you've picked up and that you're going to work. <laughs> and you know that's going to be a hard night, you know. And so I always strive for the moments where it just feels as natural as, 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 as it can, you know. It's not perfect, it's never perfect, but it's always honest. Music can change people, music can heal people, music can give direction where there's no direction. So it is important as a musician to know what music can do, not you, but the music. And so what I always try and do is to therefore tell my story as authentic as possible. And I allow the music that comes through me to come through me without me standing in its way. Surprising to some is that Mandisi needs to stay as physically fit as he is musically. Having played with greats from Jimmy Dludlu to the Abdullah Ibrahim Big Band has made it a must. I play a wind instrument, you know. <laughs> so some people will say the running helps with the playing of the trumpet and the trumpet playing helps with the running. But I, th I do think that we owe it to ourselves to do something to be physical, you know, so that we can take care of our bodies and in return, our bodies will take care of us. The creative process can be very strenuous to your brain, you know, and for me, running, sweating, spending time by myself on the road, is sort of a meditation of some sort, but it also allows me time to get out of myself. And also performing for people is physical. And I think a certain level of fitness is required for you to stay at your top, you know, to give people the performances that they deserve. Because I always feel that it's an honor to perform for people. I do therefore everything I can to prepare myself for the stage and that includes physical training. Since tea is such a popular and soothing beverage for vocalists, we'd asked tea master Ming Wei Tai to offer our guest trio a tasting of his finest blends. So uh, in this fast moving world of ours, we, we never had time to really sit down and enjoy the aroma of tea, the movement of tea. So in a tea connection like this, uh, Nigiro, try and have an opportunity for people to sit down and just give themselves a moment to just slow down. And sometimes the world opens when we slow down a little bit. 
Like Mandisi's ear for the authentic in music, the palate is a natural judge of real flavor. There will be five different teas right now. There will be five different palettes. There will be five different stories. And if we choose these teas by ourselves, according to the flavors and according to the stories of the teas, there will be five different days to talk about. Every taste that I tasted today sort of shocked me, you know, um, the, the different infusions that I've done and just the simplicity of it. Wood tasting tea in its purest form, which is like nothing we've tasted before, actually. Yeah, so, so it's, it's opened my eyes so much. It all just tastes so different, but beautiful as well. There's certain combinations that I never thought could work together that work really well, like cocoa and vanilla, black tea, like never experienced anything like it, to be honest. Even the whole preparation, yeah. like everything was the perfect temperature. Everything was just perfect. To a man whose happy place is the meeting of Afro, soul and jazz music, these blends made a lot of sense. Yeah, I think we were different. We created different and, and me acknowledging indigenous music is acknowledging my difference. You know, it's acknowledging that I'm not like the other person. And there's a certain grouping of people I belong, you know, with. And that sort of grouping can then influence, you know, other groupings. Like these tastes, you know, can be infused with other uh, groupings. And I'm more obsessed with knowing who I am. So the whole thing about indigenous music or, or traditional music, if you like, is, is merely a way of me understanding who I am. Just ahead, lost income from lockdowns frees the entrepreneurial genius of restauranteur turned farmer Umtumisa Nkabile and vegan baker Bonolo. Born in Tomfimvaba, rural Eastern Cape, the spinach queen never intended to farm. She studied travel and tourism, started an African cuisine takeaway, then life happened. Hi there, Insider SA. My name is Nomi Sam Kabile. I'm 28 years old. I'm a female farmer based in Cape Town. Welcome to my farm in Marmosbury. I started farming in March 2020 when I had to close down my catering company due to the pandemic. The catering company was my only source of income, so I needed to think of a plan in order for me to generate income again. At that time, we were still at level five. People were actually afraid to go out. So what I did is I started with selling hot butter chicken, which is umlegwa, and I did door-to-door -door deliveries. So when I saw that the demand was high, I actually decided to be a supplier myself, where I would supply people who would like to start their own business while also doing the door-to-door -door deliveries. Doing my research before planting anything actually helped me a lot because I was able to understand what it is that the community needs. I've noticed that people travel a long distance in order to get their product. So that is why I decided to plant cabbage and spinach so that I can actually deliver their product at the comfort of their own home instead of them having to spend money to go and buy their produce. The support from the community has been quite amazing because when I harvest, everything gets sold out on the same day. Tumisa's enterprise was soon employing seven people who could then afford to put food on their families' tables. And demand kept growing. The reason why I chose the farm in Marmosbury is because the farm that I was using in Fuleni, it was really small, it was a one hectare land. So I was unable to meet the demand of the community in terms of production. So when I got the offer in Marmosbury with the same rate, I decided to go for it because now I got a bigger land at the same price and I'll be able to produce more. 
My farming journey has taught me that it's okay to start small. It's okay to start with what you have and gradually grow. And it's okay to start scrappy, you know, because when I started farming, uh, I did not have firstly funding. I did not have even an irrigation system. I was using watering cans. But because I've worked hard and I've pushed through the odds, now today I have a bigger land. I have sprinklers. We're harvesting today, so the most important thing that you need to know when you harvest is to actually start harvesting from the big leaves, and then you need to leave the small leaves so that they can be able to grow again, and you can harvest after two weeks. Once we finish harvesting, we bunch the spinach using elastics before we send it to our customers. On this field alone, we can harvest 300 bunches weekly that we supply to supermarkets as well as restaurants. My advice to young entrepreneurs or aspiring farmers is to start small with what you have and gradually grow. I believe that as an entrepreneur, you need to be able to take risk and not be afraid to take risk. So the risk that I took, it actually worked in my favor because now I've gotten a lot of opportunities in terms of supplying the formal and informal market as well. Creating work and markets for one another, Township Entrepreneurs are the pros of local sourcing. Welcome to the Milk Restaurant. So this is one of the restaurants that I supply my product to. So let's see what Sia will prepare for us today. My name is Sia. I'm the consulting chef of the Milk Restaurant. We're situated in Kailicha. Uh, our menu is very limited, it's very nice, and we aim to bring out flavor in everything that we produce in the kitchen. Local agriculture helps the community in many ways, firstly creating jobs and supporting local, promoting what is produced in the country and locally, which is very good for the economy of this country and also for the chefs of this country. On top of these benefits, Chef Sia is simply a fan of the quality in the Queen's spinach. It brings so much joy to me as a chef in just handling it, touching it and working with it in the kitchen. It's fresh. Green is what it's supposed to be. When I see my food prepared at a restaurant, it's actually a very nice feeling. It actually makes me feel so happy. Uh, I've never imagined that even today I will be feeding the nation and also even supplying restaurants. So for me, it's like a dream come true. Sia's cooking makes it all the sweeter. When I think about the fact that the spinach was in the ground this morning and to actually see the final product right now shows that your dreams are valid. You don't need validation when it comes to your dreams. You just need to focus and you just need to work hard and be consistent. Even today, it still feels like I'm dreaming because I don't believe all of this is happening, you know, when such things happen because sometimes when these things happen, it's like things that you watch on TV and for you to actually live in that moment, at this moment, it's an amazing feeling. And to also be making a positive impact in your community and to have your community supporting you and to actually make your community proud, to actually make your family proud, it's very inspiring and also amazing. Showing the way and creating jobs as she goes, the spinach queen is feeding families and dreams. There's a classic example of what great things can come from the most modest of beginnings. It is the plant kingdom, one which this entrepreneurial foodie has followed. From sowing the seeds of her own produce through to opening her own plant-based micro bakery and cafe. Hi everyone, my name is Bunolo. I'm the owner and founder of Love & Karma, a vegan eatery and cafe. Welcome to my urban food jungle. My parents grow a lot of plants and my dad is a farmer, so I guess that's where the love of plants comes from. And I got into it because I was vegetarian and then I just got more into it when I became vegan. During lockdown, I didn't have any income at all. And then a lot of people said, hey, why don't you just open a space and cook? And then I met a friend and started baking. When Bonolo couldn't get cake or ice cream that met her dietary choices, she made them herself and then began taking orders, often requiring custom bakes. Every 
day is a little bit different. For example, if I'm making sandwiches, in the morning I'll go pick the lettuce. Then I come to the bakery and I start preparing the bread and all the other food as well. And then after that, whatever orders need to go out, that's what I do. So for example, today I'm doing a cupcake order for a lady who's a dance teacher. For baking today, I'm going to be using the gooseberries as a topping. These are very nice, these are organic. Everything in my garden is organic. So we're going to start with um, mixing our sugar and then oil and then we beat those up. And then we mix the soy milk with some apple cider vinegar to make it a thick buttercream. And then we add our flour and our salt, baking powder and baking soda as well. And then we mix everything up and then we bake them in the oven for about 22 minutes. The market is going green. There is a pickup in people who are becoming vegan or choosing a plant-based diet because of diseases or religious reasons or just social activism. So the demand is steadily growing. It's a way of eating that's new to many, but not exotic or complicated. And that's how this young entrepreneur is going about the business of it. My name is Bonolo, which just means simple or easy. So simplicity is very important to me. I cannot spend a lot of time on banking because I have a business to run. So anything that is fast, easy and convenient works out for me. So what attracted me to Capitec is that I can literally just be here, take my phone, take a selfie. Once I've taken a selfie, I register my details and then the card will be sent right here where I am. So while I'm waiting for something to bake in the oven, I can quickly go on the phone and use it for my banking. And it's fast and I don't have to move from my bakery. Except when she hand delivers to her clients. So we joined a delivery run and met dance studio owner and avid fan of the bakery, Alexandra Lemaitre. Benola makes delicious cakes and cupcakes and pastries. Um, she recently made a fantastic red velvet cake for my daughter's 21st, which went down so well with everybody. Everybody loved it, both the vegans and the non-vegans alike. It's important to support small businesses such as Bonolo's because she is filling a void in the market. She makes delicious vegan goods which will appeal to a cross-section of the population, both vegans and non-vegans. It's important also to create sustainable vegan businesses in order to create a sustainable earth for the rest of us. This approach to food is an extension of her personal faith devotional service which is also why I opened the bakery, why I keep baking for people and why I also leave space to pray for food that is karmic. I would like the same kind of energy that I put into devotional service to go through to my clients so that I get your order right and it comes up with love. Bonolo is doing it her way. So let Capitec help kickstart your own live better, greener, healthier and more mindful enterprise. Begin making the world a healthier, happier place with a chance of winning a 1,000 Rand Live Better Cash Prize. Simply reply to the competition post on the insidersa.co.za social media platforms using hashtag Live Better. T's and C's apply and can be found on the Insider SA website. Next up, we go behind the name change as Reason's new handle sees where Alakine marks a smart move from rap to ama piano. Sponsored by Capitech. Simplify banking. Live better. From humble beginnings 10 years ago, South Africa's youthful Amapiano genre of music went global over lockdown. Emerging as one of its new voices and by the handle, Sizwe Alakine is the hip-hop star better known as Reason. 
I've been in the music industry for about a good 15 years. I mean, I've dedicated myself to a sound, I've dedicated my brand, and I've dedicated my artist more specifically when it comes to the Reason brand. You know, part of me, after so long, felt a certain gravitation towards the sound, you know, a new sound, a South African sound. A sound that was very familiar to me, that reminded me to what I grew up to, you know, which is quite dope. As a creative, I'd like to believe you just have to keep creating new products that people need, right? It's what everybody has to do, you know? It's even people who are in fashion have to keep doing that. Technology always has to wonder, you know, how do we keep giving people products that they need from us? I guess it's just about becoming essential services <laughs> for as long as possible. Last year on TikTok, videos with the hashtag Amapiano got an extraordinary 1.6 billion views across the world. Music streaming services echo the trend. So for me, what's important is to know that I'm able to make hip-hop music and that I'm able to make Amapiano because that's where my society and my country is. We are loving music, we're integrating. We are going to these festivals and we want to see the songs that we love. We want to hear the songs that we love. We want to experience the songs that we love. And that's all I'm doing. I want to champion the sound. I want to create a new element to the sound. I want to add a new energy. And I want to be one of the first people to actually take this sound to, to the rest of the world. Today we're here in studio to actually work on some music. This boy here is DJ Zan. But we're just here to make music, man. With his profile growing fast with this new audience, image is as important as ever. I think it's very important to have a busy day, especially as a self-employed human being. You know, as an artist, you are the business, you are the work, you are the job. So the busyness means that there is business. In my world, Taking care of yourself is not even like a, like a me thing. It's part of the business as well. Having evolved so much, we wondered what today's Mr. Alakine would tell the young Seaswear. To be honest with you, I, I don't like referring back to my young self. I like referring to my future self. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's so many things I could have told my younger self, but I don't think I would have been here without none of those things having happened, you know? But when it comes to my future self, it's just... Go big, go hard, you know, with everything. Just go big, man. That's what I want to tell my future self. I guess I would even probably tell my younger self the same thing. He'll keep it for the right moment between himself and his son, Unami. A confident young man and a case of the leaf falling very close to the tree. What's up, everybody? The Insider SA is now entering into my downtime, my relaxation time. Let's go go karting. I'm gonna beat you. Uh, look, let's go. Let's find out. Yeah, so being a dad in the creative industry is an experiment every day. You know, no day is the same. You know, there's no set schedule. There's no wake up at nine, come back at five. It's, it's, it's weird hours. But I think, you know, it's all based on one fundamental. Make time for your kids, you know, make time for the kids, make time for the little ones. I've even learned that it doesn't even really about, it's not about the money, it's not about the vibe, it's not about nothing. I'm just spending time together. There's definitely a lot of excitement around go-karting today, and we've got 50 bucks riding on this. But beyond that, it's like our first downtime in a very long time, just the two of us, so I'm really excited about it. I'm looking forward to it. Um, it's his first time actually go-karting. We generally just play on the phone, but now the time has come to punish. <laughs> Unami is Seaswear's eldest son, and they've had just enough years together for a father to realize how much he can learn from his child. I think a life lesson or something that my kids have taught me is the true meaning of unconditional love. You know, we live in an industry and in a world where people only love people who are doing well or people who are doing good things, but Sometimes in your lowest moments, you need love too. And I think my kids teach me unconditional love. Well, the coolest part for me was at least I learned. And when you learn, at least you get better and better at it. 
Yeah, I want to go go cutting again. Daddy can go go cutting again. Tomorrow. Yes. You want to go again? Yes. I want to beat you again. Is a man of my word. <laughs> Don't be so dramatic. In an industry ever pushing for a new single, trending sound or look, the long game of family and consistent values is paying off in a healthy father-son relationship. The best thing about my dad is he's cool, he's chill, he's the best. I think the qualities that I see of myself in him is, um, I think, curiosity and exploration. I was always a very curious child. I was always trying to explore things. So yeah, I think the, the curiosity and exploration. The best part is we got to bond and it was nice taking his money, beating him in a race. And yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, the Insider SA, thank you very much for joining me today. This was my family time. This is my downtime. Peace. Put a peace sign up. Peace. Peace. Here's to success with the new record deal, buying more quality time for Sizwe, Alakine and Sons, and to the simple, silly, happy things that make life fun. Get more of the Insider Essay online. Follow, connect, engage, and be inspired to live better with the Insider Essay. Watch the show Monday evenings at 5.30. Repeat Saturday at 1 on S3.